after the presentation of Mr. Godel about the Arabian culture, beliefs, tradition, geography, history, and origin of Arabs, we're now going to talk about the genre, form, and general characteristics of Arabic literature. First is poetry. Poetry, the register of the Arabs, or Diwanul Arabi, is the age-old phrase whereby Arabs have acknowledged the status and value that poetry has always retained within their cultural heritage. From the very earliest stage in the Arabic literary tradition, poetry has reflected the deepest sense of Arab self-identity of communal history and of aspirations for the future. Within this tradition, the role of the poet has been of major significance. The linkage between public life and the composition of ringing odes has remained a direct one from the pre-Islamic era. When the poet was a major verbal weapon, someone whose verses could be invoked to praise the heroes of his own tribe and to pour scorn on those of their enemies. Through the pre-modern period, when poetic eulogies not only extolled the ruler who patronized the poet but reflected the pride in the achievements and extent of the Islamic dominions, to the modern period in which the poet has felt called upon to either reflect or oppose the prevailing political mood. In times of crisis, it has always been and still remains the poet's voice that is first raised to reflect the tragedies, the anger, the fears, and the determination of the Arab people. Meter and Rhyme the recording of the earliest known Arabic poetry provided future generations with examples of recitations by parts of 7th or 8th century versions of poem whose original composition and performance date back perhaps centuries. The collections reveal an already elaborate prosodic system, the earliest pieces in the development of which remain substantially unknown. The various types of poems are marked by particular patterns of rhyme and syllabic pulse. Each line is divided into two half lines called Misrah. The second of the two ends with a rhyming syllable that is used throughout the poem in order that the listening audience may internalize the rhyme that is to be used. The first line, which is often repeated, uses the rhyme at the end of both halves of the line. Thereafter, the rhyme occurs only at the end of the complete line. The great 8th century philologist Al Khalil Mashmat developed a system whereby the differing stress patterns that he heard in poetic recitations were subdivided into 15 separate meters. Later expanded to 16. El Hal Karyum, who also wrote treatises on music and compiled an Arabic dictionary, clearly stated that his system merely set down one method for the metrical analysis or Arabic poetry. And while later scholars have suggested different systems, it is remarkable that Hal Karyum's prosodic system remained the standard and indeed constituted one of the modes of defining what was poetic and what was not, until well into the 20th century. Genres and Theme Alongside these methods of categorizing poetry and poets, some classical critics identified three principal purposes, or El Rad, for the public performance of poetry. First, Panigiri, or Naton, the priest of the tribe and its elders, a genre of poetry that was to become the primary mode of poetic expression during the Islamic period. Second, praises opposite, Kampun, or He Chao, whereby the poet would be expected to take verbal aim at the community's enemies and impure their honor, most often at the expense of women. And third, praise of the dead, or elegy, or ritaton. 
Pani Girik. Pani Girik's function as a means of extolling the virtues of the tribe and its leaders was easily transferred, albeit within a very different political and social context from the pre-Islamic period to the Islamic. Hyperbolic expressions of satisfaction in the life with the ruler were intended to bolster the ruler's sense of self-esteem. This goal, the poet hoped, would not only restrict the prestige of the Muslim community as a whole, but also, on a more practical level, encourage the presentation of Lardis to the poet. Lampoon Critical analysis of the Arabic poetic tradition point out that the vigorous practice of Lampoon is the verse of panegyric. By verbally flattening one's foes, the ground is open for the glorification of one's own tribe or community. The themes of Hujaan or Lampooning and the Fakke or boasting thus often occur together. Elegy The celebration of the life and courage of a tribal comrade fallen in battle is the occasion for the earliest elegies in Arabic. After an account of the dead itself, these elegies include an appreciation of the hero's virtues, thus providing yet another occasion for the community to express its unifying principles. This combination of personal grief and communal mourning with its underlying currents of pride and aspiration survived in the early schisms within the Muslim community during the Islamic period, which came to replicate the politics of earlier times. In the elegies of those poets who adhered to groups such as the Shia or the Karajite can be found much the same spirit. Al-Kawariju The Karijide Arabic Al-Kawariju were the first identifiable sect of Islam. Their identity emerged as followers of Muhammad attempted to determine the extent to which one could deviate from ideal norms of behavior and still be called Muslim. The extreme Al-Kawariju position was that Muslims who commit grave sins effectively reject their religion entering the ranks of apostates and therefore deserve a capital punishment. This position was considered excessively restrictive by the majority of Muslims as well as by moderate El Kawarijo who held that a prophet Muslim could not be declared an unbeliever or kafiron. The El Kawarijo believed it was forbidden to live among those who did not share their views. Thus, acquiring the name by which they are known in mainstream Islamic historiography. Kawarij means the seeders or those who exit the community. Later genre As the ceremonial kasida during the Islamic centuries became more and more the realm of panigiri, other themes within the pre-Islamic tradition, wine, hunting, love, and maxims, emerged as separate genres in their own right, at least by the time of Abu Nuwas, who wrote during the 8th and 9th centuries, the collected works of a poet would contain sections that included, among other categories, such as El Camarieto, or wine poems, Shaltieton, or hand poems, Zadietan, or ascetic poems, and Kasalot, or love poems. Wine Poetry The focus on wine rather than food motifs in general is implied by the history of Arabic poetic tradition, which features a rich repertoire of popular bakik imagery and motifs, as well as a distinctive poetic genre of the El Camariato, came from the Arabic word Camron or wine. The wine poem or El Camriato acquires a set of factors, the publican, companions, 
the wine pourer, or softly, the curvaceous wine bottle, all of whom tilt against the feats. Hunt Poetry The striking continuity of theme and motive of the pursuer, the hunter, companions, and his steed, hounds, or falcon, and the pursued, whether the prey be oryx, onager, gazelle, hare, quail, or fox, is subject to dramatic transformations of poetic genre, structure, and sensibility throughout the arc of Arabic cultural history. Aesthetic Poetry The master themes of the poems that medieval Arab anthologies and editors place in the category of Zodiac are accordingly the cold look at the adornments of the world in which fortune is capricious and life frail and the need for repentance before time runs out and accounts are closed. Many Zodiac are built on motives of the first kind alone, dwelling on mortality and the vanity of human wishes. Love Poetry The theme of love has been present in the Arabic poetic tradition since the earliest poems committed to written form. The bulk of the love poetry that has been preserved was composed by male poets and expresses love and admiration for women. Whatever early tradition there may have been of women's poetry has not survived, although women have always played a major role in funeral rituals including the composing and reciting of elegies. The examples of homoerotic tradition of love poetry that had been preserved belong in the main to the later centuries of the classical period, beginning in the 9th century. The earliest Arabic poems reveal distinctly different attitudes to the theme of love, the desert environment, the nomadic lifestyle, and the need for constant travel all contribute to a poetic vision that focuses on absence, departure, lack, and nostalgia. In the majority of poems, the beloved is absent. Memories of her belong to the past, and future encounters are dependent on the dictates of fate. Prose From early on Islam, produced a broad prose literature of enduring significance. By 1500, the Muslim literary tradition, by then nearly 900 years old, was one of the leading traditions of the world and probably the largest in size at that time. Although Muslim literature later came to be written down in a considerable number of languages, until 1500, it was almost entirely written just two, Arabic and Persian. Though the Muslim canon in either language was enormous, by 1500, the Arabic was somewhat larger in part because it was older, having begun the 7th century, while Persian Muslim literature began in the 10th. Arabic is the foundational language of Muslim civilization, occupying a role similar to Greek in the classical Greco-Roman tradition or Sanskrit in the ancient Indian civilization. Under Islam, Persian was an Arabicized form of the pre-Islamic language of Iran and written the Arabic script. Arabic written literature begins with the foundational sacred book of Islam, the Quran, which came down in a series of separate revelations to the Prophet Muhammad from about 609 to 632. No other significant written literature in Arabic appears to have preceded the Quran. Quran is a sacred scripture of Islam. According to conventional Islamic belief, the Quran was revealed by the angel Gabriel to the Prophet Muhammad in the West Arabian towns Mecca and Medina, beginning in 610 and ending with Muhammad's death in 632 common era. The word Quran, which occurs already in the Islamic scripture itself, based on Quran, chapter 9, verse 111. Surely Allah has purchased of the believers their lives and their belongings and in return has promised that they shall have paradise. And chapter 75 verse 17 to 18 Surely it is for us to have you commit it to memory and to recite it. And so when you recite it, follow its recitation 
substantively. It's derived from the verb el corao to read, to recite, but there is probably also some connection with the Syriac karyanan or reading used for the recitation of scriptural readings during church services. The Quranic corpus composed in early form of classical Arabic is traditionally believed to be a literal transcript of God's speech and to constitute the earthly reproduction of uncreated internal heaven the original. According the general view referred to in the Quran itself as the well-preserved tablet based on Elawi Yumafilu Quran chapter 85 verse 22 inscribed on a well-guarded tablet that is the read of the Quran is unchangeable and imperishable. The Rise of Prose in Arabic Literature The central role of Arabic poetry decreased after the 13th century and had perhaps begun to lose its dominance considerably earlier. Arabic prose in the meantime rose and flourished throughout the period 750 to 1500. For about the first 150 years of Islam, the Quran prevailed alongside poetry and oral narratives. Before 750, little prose literature was written, apart from a handful of treatises, epistles, and speeches mostly connected with the government, such as those attributed to the Umayyad Caliphal, Secretary Abdul Hamidi bin Uyuha, and El Asula Basiyo al Wazirul al Walu of Persian origin. The Ebun Mokofai, 750 to 756, also wrote some prose treatises. Most of them are translations from Middle Persian or Palavi literature, but a few of them are original or have original passages. His longest and best known surviving work is The Tale of Talking Animals, Kalilaton Wadim Naton, an example of a mirror for prince, advice book for rulers translated from Sanskrit through Pabali and into Arabic with some reworking by Ebon Mokofai to make it acceptable to Muslim sensibilities after its beginnings a never-ending stream of Arabic prose composition in various genres of literature has been unbroken to the present day. General Characteristics of Arabic Literature The most respected and at the same time oldest literary genre in the Middle East is poetry. Poetry usually talk about heroic deeds, magical places, miracles, love, and much more. Initially, poetry was passed on orally. The prayer where poets gathered and recited was an opportunity to listen to it. The most famous market is the market in Oku where even poetry competitions were held. Over the course of hundreds of years, many types of poetry and related concepts have developed. There are a lot of them, but the most important are Adabon, Kasidoton, Diwanon, and Mualakato. Adabon, simply generally speaking, it is literature fiction. Kasidoton, this is a classic form of Arabic poetry. No division into stanzas, it was created in pre-Muslim times. Diwanon, a collection of poems by one or more poets, sorted alphabetically. El Muwala Kato, a collection of the seven most perfect Kassides collected in the 8th century. All of them were created in pre-Muslim times. New literary genres have emerged, such as a prose, novel, art story, and drama. Modern Arabic literature, despite its differences, is strongly associated with traditional Arabic literature and European traditions. Both sources drew certain patterns, which resulted in the emergence of new literary genres. The writers also look for inspiration in the surrounding world. They begin to depict the fate of simple, ordinary people. They write about social and religious conflicts, the lack of political freedom, poverty, disease, wars, and the aristocracy which they criticize. Arabic literature begins to take on a more down-to-earth character and deals with matter of everyday life. 
which make it closer to every human being. After tackling the introduction and components of Arabic literature, we're now going to the features. And the next reporter is Mr. Alupay.